I mean, it's about the same. I'll try to raise your camera. This way, I can actually scan the papers. Gotcha. You can make it focus on the screen here. Just let me know when you want to make the film break. Did you get a text message, Jessica? Uh, you might have some. Six digit number? Uh, yeah. yeah get, if I can get that number out, I should be able to get these over. Oh, not for that. No. Not a verification code number? No. All right, good afternoon. Uh, let's get started. So last time we talked about uh, what we're going to cover in this class and why we need uh, to learn the content of this class. So today, mainly we'll do uh, two things. One is review some of the content from uh, static, and then we'll talk about stress, strain, and the internal force, the uh, concept. Okay, so uh, if you check the syllabus, actually, uh, statics is a prerequisite for this class. So if you don't have static, actually, you should not be able to sign up for this class. So anyway, so that's a required uh, course there. Okay. So uh, if you don't have it, uh, I think you are have a hard time in this class, but you just need to put extra effort to do it. Uh, or, I don't know, if you can talk to the department chair or someone, put you, learn the statics first, then come to this class. That will make it easier for you. Okay, anyway, let's just have one or two special cases. Okay, so in statics, we talk about, uh, basically, what's the force, right? We have the concept, what's the force, right? Okay, anyone give me a definition, what's the force? Physics, right? From physics, what's a force? A punch you, that's a force, right? Basically, it's an action, re reaction, that's a force. So basically, the action between objects, that's a force, right? And then when you apply a force to an object, and that object going to either stay in equilibrium or move, right? If it's in equilibrium, then we have an equation of equilibrium. Okay, what's the equation of equilibrium? What's the condition that things are stable, stay still there? All the forces, all the movement, when you add them together, they're balanced, they're equal to zero. That's the equilibrium. What if not equal to zero? Then you're going to have F equal to MA, the Newton's second law, right? You're going to move, dynamics. So that's what you learn in dynamics. Okay, we're not going to talk about that. So we always talk about things in equilibrium in this class. Right? So that's why we need the equation of equilibrium. Okay, so when we talk about equilibrium, all right, so the things we actually uh, know is, okay, if you have a, let me switch to the talking camera. Okay, so can you all see the, the size? The font is large enough? Okay, so when you talk about equilibrium, let's say you have an object, right? And you can put it there, there will be maybe a stand on something, and then you apply force to it. Okay, this is supposed to be in equilibrium. And there are several models we talk about in statics. One is we call particle. We treat the things as a particle, right? So for a particle, what's the equation of equilibrium? Basically, all the forces apply on it as a vector, add together, will equal to zero, right? So if you translate it, it's basically say in the x direction. So all the forces in the x direction equal zero. All the force in the y direction equals zero. And all the force in the z direction equals zero. Right? All direction equals zero. So that's basically for a particle. Now, then we talk about for a rigid object that has certain size. You cannot treat it as a particle. Okay? So for example, like the thing I put here. Or <coughs> let's say I have a, a beam that stays here. Right? You're applying a load here. Right? 
or you can have something like this, a bar that stick to the wall, and you apply force here. So force we often times use the letter P to represent it. Okay. So now for an object like this, what I show here, you cannot treat it as a particle. What's the equation of equilibrium? Momentum. Force and the momentum equal zero. Right? So in general, the mathematical equation is all the forces right, as a vector equal zero. And then all the moments add together equal zero. Okay. So in this class, okay, we want it mathematically a little bit easier. So most of the time, we're just only dealing with 2D conditions. So we talk about things within the 2D dimension. Right? So then we always talk about it in the x or y plane. So we draw things, we we'll say, OK, the force in the x direction supposed to be 0. The force in the y direction equals 0. Okay. Then what about movement? Then the movement, basically, that you turn within this plane equals 0. Okay, so that is, you have sigma, the m, in the z direction equals zero. Right? Movement, we talk about right hand rope. If you rotate something this way, that's called m along the z direction, so that's called mz. Right? Because we talk about only the x, o, y plane. Oftentimes, we just drop the letter z. We just say, okay, you're going to have three equations. That will be sigma v. We just say sigma movement equals zero. Right? But we mean that the moment in this plane equals zero. Okay. All right. So, just a quick example. Okay. So, if you for this one, all right. So for this one, okay, you apply the force here. Right? How can it be in equilibrium? Because you have forces. Because, of because you stick that to the wall. It's the wall provides support, right? So the wall is going to generate the reaction force. Right? So what's the reaction force on the wall? Equal to. You're going to have, let me change our color. So you're going to have a reaction force here. Right? Sometimes we call it reaction force. So we use R. Right? And that's a force there. So the force, reaction force R, will be balancing the load you're applying, P. Okay? So basically, in this case, you're going to have what? Sigma F in the Y direction. We call this Y direction. Right? Sigma F Y equals zero. <laughs> Okay. What about sigma f x? It's automatically zero. There's no load in that direction, so you don't need to check on it. Okay. Is this thing in equilibrium right now? Yeah. This is the reaction. It's not moving. Yes. It's not moving. Okay. Can this two uh, make the balance? I mean, what about the movement? Is the movement equal zero? No, because. This pair of force, you're going to say sigma f y equals zero. So basically, this is r minus p equals zero. So r equals p, right? So this is an equal force, but opposite direction. So what they generate? We call it a couple. Generated movement. So the movement is there. So therefore, this movement is not zero in general. So it's not in equilibrium. Then how can it be in equilibrium? The internal forces of the labor. There is another reaction, right? So the reaction at the wall. So the wall must provide another reaction. That is the reaction movement. So you're going to have a movement. You don't know which direction. You can just assume one direction. Then you find out the value. If it's negative, it's other direction. If it's positive, that's the thing you guess it correct. Right? So basically, by equation of equilibrium, you can find out this movement here. Oftentimes, we call MR. That's reaction movement. Right? OK, so then you to find out that, you write the equation sigma m right, equals zero. This is this equation here. Right? So sigma m equals zero. For moment, oftentimes, we take a point. We take it all the moment to that point. This point doesn't matter. To any point, it should be zero. But you are oftentimes, you write equation. You pick the one, give you the easiest one equation. Simplest one, quickest one, give you answer. Right? So you can say, OK, the moment to point A equals zero. OK, very <coughs> quick this point A. The best choice is here, right? Because to this point, you can write the equation of equilibrium very quickly or shorter. Okay, so to this point, all the movement equals zero. How can we write, translate this equation? P times to point A, A is here, right? Yeah. I said A is this point uh, out of uh, space here. So point A here. <coughs> okay, so the point A, movement equals zero. 
Okay, to this point, who generates movement? You're going to have an MR that's there. Okay, MR to this point is going clockwise. And then what else? Minus D. Minus D. Minus what? A? P e times, e times the, distance. the distance. Okay, you can call whatever the A. Let's say this point B. So the A B lens, right? Or sometimes we use a letter L. Say this is the lens L, right? That's supposed to be zero. So from here, once you know load P, you know the lens A B. You can calculate what's the reaction force. Right? So we're going to do a lot of problems, homework or exam. You're going to use the equation of equilibrium find out the reaction forces or reaction movement. And not the basic scale you have to have. All right? Otherwise, you'll be in trouble. This is the, all this other part depend on the solution from this equation. All right? Okay, any questions about the equation of equilibrium here? Okay, if not, let's move on, right? We have lots to cover. Okay, let's say, give you another example. Okay, I have a bar, put it into the wall, right? Now, what I'm doing is applying load, let's say I put it this way, a load P. Okay, now, let's say there's a slain long bar, I apply and load there. Okay, now can you find the reaction at the wall? This I have space to write A here, and I can write B here, right? Can you find the reaction in the wall? Yes. Okay, let's give a value. What's P equal to? 50. 50, okay, P equals 50. Okay, what's the reaction in the wall? 50. So the reaction, you, how, how do you find it, approach? Uh, the you draw the free body diagram. Okay, so here's the important concept. So the free body diagram, that's the scale. The kind of scale we need to write the equation of equilibrium. So before you write the equation, you need to draw the free body diagram. I think we did that in statics, right? So how do you draw the free body diagram? Uh, you draw this object, right? Then you label what? All the loads, including the force, the forces, the movement, a movement, right? You include all the load, and what else? The reaction, right? So for example, for this one, you draw this object, as I have here, and then you draw the load is already there, right? Then you draw the reaction. So the reaction, you can say, so here I have the reaction R here. I kind of guess it will be this way. If I don't know, I just can put, rather put the direction that I find out from the equation. Right? So the R, okay, now can we find out R? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, what's the equation? P minus R equals zero. So sigma F X equals zero, right? This is the X, let's call this X direction. Right? So you have all the force in the X direction, or along the longitudinal direction, equals zero. So you find out R minus P equals zero, right? So R minus P equals zero, or someone say, oh, I don't like, I'd write P minus R equals zero. Is this correct? Yes. Either one, right? So you, find, you define a direction, you stick with that direction, that will be fine. Okay, so that will give you R equals 50. Right? Negative 50, 50. Okay, should R be negative 50 or positive 50? That's all P is. That's so that's 18, it's 50. it's 50. So based on my label here, I say R, assume R this way, right? So I assume R this way and I write the equation. So I found R equals positive 50. So it's spelled positive 50, right? So it's not negative. What does that mean? That means what I assume was correct. Right? Somehow I got the correct guess. This way, so it is this way. So in statics, we define a force, positive or negative, by this is the direction. Right? If the force goes this way, like the P here, we say this force is positive because it follows my positive axis. Right? Now this one, you can see it's a negative force. That's why we write the equation here, see? I put a negative R. Why I put a negative R? Because it's against the x direction. Right? But the R value, the value itself is positive. Okay, so this is the definition of positive and negative. Whoever follows the direction is positive. Whoever against the direction is positive. 
That is negative, right? Okay, now this is what we learned before. Okay, now I'm going to give you a new definition of positive negative in this class. Okay, that doesn't based on direction. It based on definition. So when you have an object, uh, when you are pulling on this object, right? This thing, if I push press on it, it's going to shrink. If I pull on it, it's going to stretch, elongate. Okay, so if I pull on it, I call this force, pulling force, positive. <coughs> if I push on it, that's negative. So I based on deformation. So basically, the force, okay, in this class now, is positive or negative based on deformation. Okay, that's the key, oh, key point here. It's based on deformation, or deformation-based definition. A positive thing, sign convention. Right? <coughs> okay, so here is in this class, I will call this force both positive. Okay, so I just redraw it here. Let's say I have a bar. Okay, I'm pulling here 50. Now, to make this bar in equilibrium, you must apply another force 50 here. Is that correct? Because otherwise it will fly. And that's not what we're going to talk about. Okay, so in equilibrium, then you must have a pair of force applied that's in equilibrium. And this force, you're pulling on this bar. So it's a spring, like a spring. You're pulling on, it's going to stretch. So therefore, we say you're applying a positive force. And that generates a positive deformation. So the deformation is positive. Elongation, positive. So we say this force, this pair of force are positive. Then, uh, other way, if you just compress it, the deformation is negative, then you're going to have a force, we call it negative. Okay. So, these are two different set of definition of positive and negative. Okay. This part, oftentimes, uh, students get confused a lot. Maybe by the middle sem semester, there are still people get confused positive or negative. So, make sure you read the textbook. You know, this one supposed to be chapter one, right? So read the textbook, they give you other way of wording the definitions. But basically here the meaning is depend on the definition. Yes? So the momentum we would do in more of a polar type of, uh, when it comes to our momentum. The momentum, momentum we'll talk about in chapter three. Okay. It's also depend on <coughs> definition. You can have a positive or negative. It's also, in this class, all <coughs> depend on definition. All right? Because when you have to have a pair of force or a pair of movement to generate deformation. That's the concept you need to set up. Okay. Because here, if you just apply 50 on one side, you won't generate deformation. You have to have a pair. They must be in equilibrium. To, when you stretch something, you say, oh, see here is the cable, right? I'm stretching, I'm just applying one force here. But actually, I'm applying two. Because the earth, the cable is helping me holding their <coughs> generated reaction. So actually, when I apply one, I'm applying two to stretch the cable. So always a pair of force to generate deformation. Therefore, I call this pair positive or negative this way. All right? OK, this is one concept. Now, the next concept we want to talk about is called internal force. Remember, in this class, we're different from previous class. We don't treat the things as an object that rigid or that far away as a particle. We treat the things all soft, deformable. Right? So therefore, we need to look at how things deform, and we need the <coughs> we call internal force. Okay, so that's the concept, internal force. Okay, what's the internal force? Take the word by the meaning by its word, right? It's face value, internal. So when you have an object, you are applying force. That's you are applying from external, right? Uh, we call it external load. Now, if you look at the inside, okay, imagine if I pull it on your leg, okay, where you feel a force, right, in your knee. Right. Yes, why? Because this is in transfer, right? I apply force to your, uh, let's say I pull your uh, feet, right? Then your feet, it transfers through your leg to your knee, and even to your body, right? And even to your arm, if, if somehow you're holding there and pulling from below, then you feel it's through your body, everywhere you feel the force. So that means you're applying load. 
there are force inside, right, everywhere. So the force inside, that's what we call internal force. Okay. So the force inside, everywhere, that will generate the deformation. All right. So let's use the same example. Okay, let's say we pull this one 50 pounds here. Okay, now if you look at any point here inside, okay, let's say I cut here, right? If I cut it here, I make a cut, right? So if I make a cut, then I can draw a free body diagram like this. So this is a cut, so I use this curved line to show I'm not making a perfect cut, right? So it's a curve. So this is a 50 here. Now, what do you, what you have on this surface when you cut it? You're going to have action reaction, right? So this surface <coughs> going to subject to a force that pulling from the other part of the object. Right? Let's say you can say it the other way. Say it against it. Okay. Let's say there's nothing there. Then what happened to this object if there's nothing here? It's going to fly away. Right? So this thing is in equilibrium. That means all the force applying this part is supposed to be zero. So there you must have a reaction. Right? So when you cut it anywhere in the object, when you make a cut, there must be actually reaction between these two surfaces. Right? So it's not the same. If you look at this part, I just draw it here. So this half, right? you have 50 applying here. <coughs> then there must be a reaction here as well. And this two should be the action reaction. There are a pair. It should be equal in value, opposite in direction. Right? OK, so this is the force we're going to need to find out. We're you know, writing equation on equilibrium. We find the internal force. So by definition, this force, when you make a cut inside the object, the force show up, that's the internal force. So oftentimes, we we'll need looking for this internal force. Okay, now if I apply 50 here, what's the internal force? 50. Okay. Here's something we, some people get confused. Okay, if I push you 50, okay, I apply 50 here. Okay, the easiest is thinking, oh, sir, here is 50, because I did, I draw this picture here, right? I made the cut, I write the equation of equilibrium, I found that A must be 50. But oftentimes people get confused, but just thinking about, okay, here you push 50, but on the floor, this is going to, the table going to against it, give you another 50. So 50, 50 here. So somebody will answer me, oh, inside, I have 100. Because someone push here 50, someone push here 50. Is that correct? OK, you can see from this picture here, it's definitely not correct. Right? So you can remember this way. When you go to a store, you buy five pounds something. OK, so five pounds, you apply onto the weight. And then the floor gives another five pounds support. So the cashier cannot charge you for 10 pounds, right? If you agree, this will be 10 twice, then the cashier can always charge you twice the price. Okay. If you don't want the cashier charge you twice, remember what's in there is the same as what you have here, right? So the value is only 50. Yeah, it sounds very silly, but sometimes when you suddenly think about it, some people just give me the wrong answer, all right? Okay, any question about the concept of internal force? Any doubt? Okay, internal force is everywhere in, inside the object. It's like you have water there, right? If you go to the water tank, everywhere there's pressure there, right? It's looking like you cut the surface, there is pressure there. That means that's the internal force, all right? So we're going to, uh, for lots of, some lots of problem, we're going to need this concept. Make a cut, find out what's the internal force. All right, so it sounds a very simple uh, concept, right? internal force. You just make a cut. And how to find it? Make a cut, write the equation of equilibrium, right? Like for this one, you have A minus 50 equals zero. You find out the N. So really uh, simple. Oftentimes, we make mistake by, oh, this is so simple. I don't need to do it, right? I can just think about it and then write the value there. And that generate mistake. So it's always easier to just draw it and then write the equation and find it. 
it won't take you two seconds, right? So just take the step, write it down, draw it, and then find the correct answer. Okay, so the next concept we need to cover, talk about, uh, will be the stress. Okay. We talk about stress all the time, right? We have too many classes, that's stress, right? But here we're not talking about that mental stress, psychological stress. We talk about the physical stress, okay? So, uh, anyone learned the concept of stress before? Forceful area. Forceful area. Okay, when I ask, ask this question, oftentimes people give me stress equals force per area. Right? Okay, now this is correct. Okay, but it's not complete. So this is a very, actually, lots of variations. Okay, so basically, what's stress? If you don't use this mathematical, this is a mathematical answer. Okay, what's the English answer? Language, use the word, describe it. <coughs> it's a force per area. That's your three maths again. Basically, it's the <coughs> intensity, right? You can say it's the intensity. How tense you are applying the load there? It's like a same like pressure, right? Pressure basically is a type of stress because that's the force per unit area, that the area is in the water that per unit area, right? So it's like a, the price, right? You go to a store, right? You buy something, let's say we go buy meat. You buy a piece of meat for $5. I buy a piece of meat for $10. Okay, who get the cheaper one? Maybe it's me. I got $10, but I maybe you get a cheaper one. Why? I got a 10 pound for $10. You got one pound for five dollars. So, to describe how the price, you know, how expensive or how intense the force is, you have to do this mass. And actually, the material, oftentimes when you build a structure, the material fails <coughs> based on stress. Because you can have apply five pounds to a huge structure, it will nothing. But you can apply the same five pounds to a tiny thing, it will fail. Right? That's the concept intensity there. Therefore, we need oftentimes calculate the stress instead of just talk about the load. Right? Okay, so that's the concept. Right? Now, how you determine the stress? Actually, here are two different uh, categories. One is what we call normal force. Uh, normal stress, sorry. Okay, another we call shear stress. What's a normal stress? What's normal? Perpendicular. Perpendicular. Yeah. So you, when you have a surface, there is a surface normal. So when you have a stress applying onto a surface, let's say perpendicular to the surface, like this one here, right? So this will be a force applied here, and this gives you a normal stress. So the normal stress, oftentimes we use sigma, electric sigma. Just everyone kind of used to it. Right? That's why you have the uh, sigma delta club, or right? Sigma, uh, this sigma there. That's basically means from the mechanical. Uh, I think it's from the mechanical uh, because we use sigma a lot. Right? Okay, so the stress, okay, equal to the force divided by the area. Oftentimes you just use A. It's just a letter. You can, as long as you say uh, the area W, that's fine, right? As you, you define. Just easier because the area, first letter is A. Average area. Okay. Okay, now we'll define what's the area. The area should be where the force is applied. Okay. So use this equation, the area should be where the force is applied. Also, you kind of assume it's uniform. You average them out. So when things are changing, then you cannot use this equation. We're going to have a situation later on that things are not uniform, then we need to divide up. You can very locally, it's here, this tiny area, how much force here, how much force here, then you calculate them separately. When it's not uniform, right? Okay, what's shear stress? You have a moment source. Okay, so when you have a moment, no, you don't have to have moment. Shear stress, the basic definition is you have an object here. Okay, so the force is not perpendicular to the surface. 
the force is applying this way. Let's say a shear force V. Then this thing going to deform, right? And this force is parallel to the surface. We call it a shear force. And then that shear force divided by the area give you the shear stress. I found that quite a few times people get confused. What's stress? What's force? They're a totally different concept. And they're a totally different unit. Right? What's the unit for force? Newton. Newton. Right? Pump or Newton. Standard unit is Newton. Okay, what's the stress then? It should be Newton per meter square. And now we call Pascal. Okay, what's a kettle Pascal? A thousand. What's a gig Pascal? Ten nines, right? Like a gig megabyte memory or gigabyte memory. It's the same meaning. Okay, so that's the uh, unit there. Okay. 